Thank you, Frango Fresco 2. <laughs> All right. So uh, you wanted to be a flight attendant. That's interesting. Uh, this is just a, a funny story that, that reminded me of. I have a friend of mine who, uh, who always wanted free travel, and he tried a bunch of tricks, but the one that worked was he went on OkCupid, and you can filter by, by occupation. And he filtered for flight attendants. And flight attendants, if you have like a significant other, gets like super big discounts. So he convinced one flight, he sent like messages to, to like thousands of flight attendants on OkCupid <laughs> and convinced one of them to like, he's like, look, you're pretty, but that's not the point. Like, <laughs> I would love to know if you'd like to make a deal. <laughs> like, how about I provide you with some cash and you provide me with your companion pass and I can travel anywhere in the world. And I was like, wow, I should become a flight attendant. <laughs> this is brilliant. This is like the first time I ever get a date. That would be incredible. <laughs> oh man. So, um, I just moved to Lisbon and, uh, you know, traveling and moving to a new place is kind of scary. I was a little worried that like, I would feel really out of place. You know, I wouldn't know anybody. But I found that Lisbon feels a lot like home. Like I landed at the airport and uh, Rajiv picked me up in his Uber. <laughs> and he took me home and I, I needed some food. So I ordered some Taco Bell and Subway on Bolt Food. and. Uh, it was delivered by such, such dev. It was great. It was amazing. Uh, I really just felt like it was the perfect place to go home. And uh, and I've been noticing, I live in Bairro Alto right now, and so every time I walk out the street, there's like Indians and Pakistanis that are everywhere. And they always start talking to me in my parents' language, and I have no idea what they're saying, and I have to convince, like, I'm like, ah, I'm sorry, I should really know what you're talking about, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I've been traveling a lot, and I noticed that there's two types of people in the world. There are people who are well, who here, I'd love to see you uh, by hands, uh, who loves to sit in the window seat when they fly? Oh, yeah. oh wow, significant window seat crowd here. Oof. And uh, who sits in the aisle? All right, very few. And then where do you sit since? Oh, she doesn't fly or want to reply, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's the most interesting person in the audience. I feel, I feel like she's like an inverse relationship to the quality of the joke. So if she's not laughing, then this is a great show. I mean, it's a terrible show. I, I, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. I, I, you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, <laughs> the best joke that was the that, that crushed with her was about shitting by a cow shitting about how terrible this show was. I love it. It was my favorite thing. Um, so anyway, there's very few aisle people. I've noticed that out of these two types of people, like. The majority of people here are, are window seat sitters, and, and I think you're a beautiful crowd. Like, you love to like sit down early, get to your seat, like watch the beauty of what's outside, maybe take a video or a photo. Um, that's like the type of person that like a window seat person is. And then there's aisle seat people, and we just love to like, like piss and shit. Like we just love to get up and be able to go to the bathroom and piss and shit and like probably vape in the toilet or whatever. That's why I think I, I've, I've just been. I, I think that those are the two types of people. And then there's like probably someone in the world who likes to sit in the middle seat. I don't know who that kind of person is like. That would be crazy. Uh, but flying is pretty interesting these days. It's changed a lot since I was a kid. Uh, you know, um, you know, I, I live in the U.S. Or I lived in the U.S. and we have these. Um, these people call the TSA, the, the, the security people at, in American airports. They're the ones that keep the world safe. If it wasn't for them, gosh, they're so useless. They're the stupidest people in the world. Uh, but in California, which is where I grew up, there's uh, like marijuana is legal. And I found it pretty interesting because well, a few months ago I was living in, uh, I, was, I was flying from Los Angeles to Sacramento and uh, I'm getting in like the security line and there's a very deep smell of marijuana. Like the guy in front of me clearly is carrying some. And so he puts his, uh, his bag through the security line and it gets pulled over to the side and I'm like, oh shit, what's about to happen? And the, the security guards pull it over and they, they open up the bag, they do a quick scan and then they say, sir, like you can see a bag of grass in this, in this bag, it's open, there's a bag of grass, of marijuana in this bag. And they're like, sir, you are not allowed to travel with a bottle of water on this flight. <laughs> this has to be thrown. What the fuck is going on? Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. So um, I've been uh, I've been running my own kind of marathon this year. Um, I decided I was going to lose some weight, and uh, I'm down like 150 pounds. It's 
pretty amazing. Thank you. Liar! Yeah. <laughs> I lost uh, uh, 30 pounds from, from working out and exercising, and I, I lost a 120 pound girlfriend, so. <laughs> 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 we didn't break up, I literally lost her. I don't know where she is. I've been looking for her for a while. If anybody sees a 120 pound white girl, please give me a call. No, but seriously, uh, we were in a relationship for three years, and, uh, and then we broke up. And, uh, and that was kind of sad, but uh, you know, it was my decision, so I can't really blame anybody else. Um, and so uh, I was talking to a friend though recently, uh, right before I broke up, uh, and he, he was mentioning that like, I've been in a relationship for three years, and he's like, that sucks, man, three years. Like, that means no more blowjobs. <laughs> and I was like, this is really not cool, dude. Like, just because I've been in a relationship for three years, you're not gonna suck my dick anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were close. <laughs> Shit, man. I really, I really am sad because the, the length of time that I broke with my ex and, and that joke is like getting longer at every performance. <laughs> and it's really hard to make it fair that I'm like, I was in a relationship for three years that a joke still fits. It's someday not going to work and I'm going to cry that day, man. Oh, man. Anyway, so we broke up and my parents noticed that I broke up, that we broke up. This was the first girl I ever introduced my parents to. Um, and so they were like like shattered because like, you know, they're Indian parents. They moved to India, they moved to America uh, with an arranged marriage. They met each other like four days before they got married yeah, for real. And then like they, my dad was studying in America and then my mom like met this guy, four days later was wedded to him. And then seven days later had to get on a plane and fly to another country, America, where she didn't know anybody. And my, her parents didn't have a phone. So there was like, it was like, it was like human trafficking, but like in a, okay way i guess <laughs> i never thought about that but that's pretty fucked up actually <laughs> i'm interested in what, anyway okay so um so my parents were like really excited that finally i was gonna get married i have three older siblings and they always wanted wanted us to get married uh, as soon as possible it was like like as soon as my sister went to college my, we, we were all visiting at home and uh, my parents wanted to get her arranged and she was like that's not gonna happen and uh, one day we were all visiting my, my, my family for Thanksgiving and uh, there was this newspaper in America called India Abroad, which is like this just newspaper for people export, uh, who live in America now who are Indian. And we were just hanging out and one of us, I think my brother was flipping through the newspaper and on the classified ad section, there's a photo of my sister and it says, Nagina, uh, oh, like a uh, beautiful Indian woman ready to get wedded. Like, <laughs> she goes to UC Berkeley, here is her GPA, here is her scores. She is very, she has p very good potential. If you're interested, please send email to parents of, and I was like, what the fuck, my parents put my sister, this is definitely human trafficking, what the fuck? <laughs> and so my parents are like a very old school type of, uh, of Indian who, where arranged marriage is normal, and they were uh, trying to set us all up and get us married. And, uh, and so they just told me that like, uh, like many, sh you know, your siblings all got married, but none of them got married to the right Sikh Indian type of person. <laughs> we know we're not going to get you to marry a, a perfect Indian woman. Like, will you just please not be gay? <laughs> that was their only request for me. And so I've been working really hard, guys. It's been like a lot of talk. I think I pulled it off. I made it this far, but like some of you are very beautiful. Yeah, I think it's just because you're white. I can't really tell. <laughs> So I was like, how do I not disappoint my parents? I was like, well, all right, first of all, my most important thing is I don't want to get canceled. I feel like that's going to be like a, the destruction of my potential. So uh, I thought maybe I would become a stand-up. That would definitely not disappoint my parents. Uh, and so I, I felt like if you make a lot of, like if you're a stand-up, you can make stupid jokes and uh, you're allowed to get away with stuff, you know, until like, I guess that's not true anymore. I guess a bunch of stand-up comedians got screwed. And then um, I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll also try to make my parents not uh, disappointed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, appoint, appoint my parents. Um, and uh, I'll start playing chess. That might be something that impresses my parents. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna move to New York City and I'm gonna start competing in chess tournaments. And, uh, and I moved to New York City and I started playing in chess tournaments. And uh, the average age at my rating level for playing chess, you know what chess is? 
It's a one with a headrish or shake or whatever you call it. And, uh, and the average age at these tournaments was like six and a half to seven years old. <laughs> and like, I don't know how many weekends I got, I got destroyed by a five-year-old Asian child. It was just like every fucking weekend. It started to really hurt my feelings. And after a while, you stop like, like the first time you beat a child, you feel really bad. But like the 15th time that you lose to a child, you're like, I'm not going to respect the child. Like the, it doesn't, the, the, the age doesn't matter anymore. It's like the, the, the score is what matters. And so uh, I decided, I went to this tournament in, uh, in uh, Colombia in about five months or six months ago. And um, so if every 300 points that you're uh, less than someone, you have a one in 100 chance of beating them. So I was playing somebody who was 600 points, a one in 1,000 chance of beating this person. One in 1,000 chance is like 0 .001 or something like that. And, uh, and so I'm playing this game. This kid's like, like anyway, so I'm playing this game and I realize if I sacrifice my rook, I might win this queen. I call my friend, I'm like, Mafe, please turn on the camera. And uh, anyway, I sacrifice my rook. I win the queen. I move my knight. He loses a bishop. He's just self-destructing. Move my rook over. And I'm like, all right, yeah, checkmate. And I, good game. I'm like, yeah, on camera. I'm like, yes. And I'm like, finally, I'm going to have like this video. I'm going to post it. I can't wait. I'm finally going to send it to my parents. I'm going to finally impress them. They're going to be like proud of me. And then I watch the video. And this child was six years old. And it's like, all you see is me like, turn on the camera with like a excited stare. It's like she turns it on for yeah. And this kid just goes, and he starts to tear up. And then he just started, then I just take the bishop and I'm like, I'm just like here like, and this kid's like, and then I go, check me. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and I was, thought I was finally going to make my parents proud, but instead this is probably the video that if it ever gets caught is going to be the one that gets me canceled. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys very much for your time. Mr. Akumanish, everybody. All right. Nice. I am very excited.